Hey, YouTube theologians, I'm not, I'm stopped because I'm going to read you something because I, you know, I like to, in these Sunday Drive Home, sort of reflect on the sermon. It's like a redux of the sermon or a remix or reflux, sermon reflux. But we've been posting the sermons on the internet, so then you guys get, you can watch them. I guess that's fine. So we're going to talk about something different. So it occurred now, I found today... I was posting a picture of my Noah family reunion sticker on Instagram. You know, oh, it's on the back of my computer. Let me show you. I got my Noah, can you see it? My Noah family reunion sticker. And I was posting a picture on Instagram and I found a message on Instagram. I didn't even know you could send messages to people on Instagram. But I found I had messages on Instagram. like. There's not enough ways to get a hold of people that you got to... But, but Brittany asked me a question. So Brittany, I'm sorry if this you sent me this like four years ago. I didn't know that there, you could do that on the Instagram. Anyway, she said, uh, Pastor Wolfmuller, did you ha- is there a place where you talk about the picture of the anchor of the soul in one spot? And um, could you send it to me? And instead of going to look for where I've talked about it before, I thought, oh, I'll just talk about it again. So the text is Hebrews chapter... (laughs) I don't know if this is lazy or or working hard. Not wanting... Doing... Well, you guys can figure it out. Hebrews 6, verse 19 says this. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. A soul anchor. A hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, what is going on now? This is a beautiful picture. This is the idea. Okay, so the first thing to get a hold of what's happening is you got to remember... Oh, go back to Moses. Remember Moses? Moses went up to the Mount Sinai, and he's in the cloud for 40 days, And the Lord says to Moses, there on the cloud, make a copy of the things that you see. That is key. Make a copy of the things that you see. So Moses is there. Oh, look, this is a little one of those little dust tornadoes. Dust devil right there. Look at it go. So uh, so Moses is there on top of the mountain and he goes into the throne room of God and he makes a copy he makes he makes a he copies down what he sees and and then he comes down off the mountain and builds the tabernacle now now this what this means is that the tabernacle is a is a copy of the heavenly throne room so in heaven there's a throne in the tabernacle there's the ark of the covenant the mercy seat in heaven, there's the four living creatures with all these wings covered in eyes. In the tabernacle, there's the two gold cherubim above the mercy seat, and there's the two cherubim in the cloth. In the, in the heavenly throne room, there's the prayers of the saints, and in the earthly tabernacle, there's the incense burning. So all of the stuff on earth is a copy, or what Hebrews calls a shadow of the heavenly reality. So, so that's the first thing. You got that? Now, that's, that, that already is an amazing thing to think about. But then, Hebrews picks up on this and says that Jesus is the high priest, not of the earthly tabernacle made by hands, you know, the, the leather. and the, My dad thinks that it's made out of porpoise because that's the only way to get blue leather. If any of you have different ideas, you should send a letter to dad that you disagree with him. Let him know. <laughs> Weird though to think they made it might have made the tabernacle out of porpoise skin. Dolphin, you know, dolphin leather. Anyhow. Uh, so they so that's a it's a oh the high priest goes into the to the tabernacle made by hands, 
But Jesus goes into the heavenly tabernacle, the heavenly throne room. He enters there behind the veil so that the veil, remember the veil in the earthly tabernacle that stood between the holy place and the holy of holies where only the high priest would go twice a year on the same day, the day of atonement, first with bull blood and then with goat blood, offering a sacrifice for his own sins and the sins of the people and all this sort of stuff, that there's a veil to go through. And Jesus goes through that veil when he ascends into heaven, he goes into the heavenly throne room to the true heavenly mercy seat. Not to the Ark of the Covenant on earth, but to the throne of God. So Jesus is not doing things in the copy. He's doing things in the real place, in the real heavenly place. Now, the text in Hebrews 6 says that we have an anchor of the soul, an anchor of the soul that has gone behind the veil. Okay, so okay, so that first layer, the uh, earthly and then the heavenly throne room. Now here's the second picture that this, this text is working with. You know, when you have a boat, uh, if you just sit in the boat, it'll just blow wherever, kind of go off. So you have to anchor it. And especially when you anchor it to shore, what happens is you get to shore and then one person jumps off and they go on shore and they tie the boat off or they put the anchor there on the shore so that it doesn't float away. It's anchored to the shore. And, and one person goes off and does it. So the picture in Hebrews chapter 6 is this. Is we're all in the boat, the ark of the Holy Christian Church. We're floating in the tumultuous waves of this time. And Jesus, our forerunner, has jumped off the boat and has carried the anchor to the shore. But not only that, it's like the tabernacle is right there on the shore and he's carried the anchor into the holy place, through the veil, into the holy of holies, and he has wrapped the anchor, not around a tree stump or the dock, he's wrapped the anchor around the Ark of the Covenant, around the mercy seat, around the throne of God. So that even though we're still on the boat, you know, tossed to and fro, we're anchored to the shore, but we're, the, uh, the shore is heaven. The shore is the throne room of God. That's amazing. And this anchor is called, in Hebrews, the anchor of our souls. So this is the picture. It's a compellingly beautiful picture. Can you think of this? That there's like a rope around your soul, and it goes through the visible to the invisible, and it's wrapped around the throne room of God. It's wrapped around the throne of God. Now, I like to especially imagine this at church. So, that's, that rope around your soul goes straight to the altar at your church. So, at Hope Lutheran Church in Aurora, Colorado, there's actually an anchor on the altar to remind you of that. that uh, anchor is the ancient s Christian symbol for hope because of this verse. And at St. Paul, it's like a little Cairo with C Christus Victor on it, or a little cross, a Jerusalem cross with Christus Victor. Uh, Jesus Christus Nike. And you got to picture that this, this soul anchor, this soul rope is goes straight through the altar and it goes all the way to heaven. And whenever, you're, whenever you go to church, it's because Jesus just pulls the rope and he pulls you up to church. And then when it's time for communion, Jesus pulls you up to the altar and he gives you his body and blood and then he gives you slack. And you can go back to your seat and you can, you can go about your vocation. He's just Jesus is just letting the line run. And then on Sunday, he reels you back into church, reels you back into the altar. And then he gives you his body and blood. And then he gives you slack to go out and serve your neighbor. And then one day, when, it, when your time's up, Jesus is just going to keep reeling it in. And he's just going to pull your soul, wham, right to the throne room. Because that's where you're anchored. That's where you're bound. That's where you're tied up. You're lashed to the throne room of heaven. <laughs> that's, so, <laughs> that's so beautiful. That's such a beautiful text. We have this anchor of the soul that has gone behind the veil. <laughs> so that's, the, that's how I like to think about it, Brittany. 
And I hope that's helpful uh, to the rest of you too, to know that Jesus has got you. He's got you on the line. He's got, he's your anchor. And we're driven every which way in this life. But, but Jesus has got a hold of us. That's Sunday drive home. Now I just have to figure out how to respond to an Instagram message. I don't know if... <laughs> I'll figure it out. Oh, you can get your own Noah Family Reunion sticker. Someone remind me. I'll put a link in the... That's to the, the merch store. Merch. Ha! <laughs> merch. And I always forget to mention this. If you like these Sunday Drives homes, you might like the Wednesday Whatnot, which is a free email that I send out every Wednesday. We give away a book once a month. It's just kind of stuff I'm thinking about and looking at and things I found curious and articles and tips and stuff like that. You can sign up to, for that for free at the website, wolfram.co. And I accidentally started another podcast with Jonathan Fisk this week called, I can't remember what he said it was called, Stop the White Noise or something. Anyway, it's he and I exploring how to do stuff, like how to manage all stuff. So if you can find that interesting, also remind me. I'll try to put a link in the description. Thanks, guys. God's peace be with you. Get to making with Jive Boy. When it hits you.